Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Obama thought he had put the Russian bear to sleep with his loud, arrogant voice. Where is where is the president of the United States of America? This is perhaps the most depressing, embarrassing day in American history. Here we have uh, a man, the president of the United States, who speaks loudly and carries a broken stick, who has disappeared from public view while his arch enemy, Vladimir Putin, has launched repeated airstrikes in the nation of Syria. To make matters even more interesting, Putin has signed a decree drafting 150,000 conscripts into the Russian military. To make matters even more crazy, Iran and Hezbollah are preparing a major ground offensive in Syria with the Russian Air Force as air cover. Can you believe what's going on? Can you believe what's going on and Obama gets away with hiding? How does the President of the United States get away with hiding at a time like this when he just spoke so loudly the other day as though he was in control, he had put Putin in his place, he was firmly in control. You know how? Do you know how he gets away with it? Tell me the consequences of this man's behavior. His entire life has been that of liberals kissing his feet for reasons I don't think you need to have me articulate. From the time he was a little boy, they kissed his feet. The liberals smoothed the way, ushered him right into the presidency, where he is an abject failure at every level. But I don't want to talk about this loser. I want to talk about Syria. And I'm going to ask you the same question today that I asked you yesterday, right here on the Savage Nation. Now, if you're a moron and want to hear about a baseball game, go ahead, make my day and turn the station. Go ahead and make my day and listen to some idiot with bling in his teeth rubbing his crotch, if that's what you want. Or some slut from Hollywood falling down and having her breasts exposed. And you wonder why you have no nation, you fool. Putin signs a decree drafting 150,000 conscripts, and we have men in pink ties yesterday mumbling and stumbling over themselves. Oh, don't behave that way. We'd hope the Russians would behave another way. We'd hope the Russians would understand the bigger picture. Can you believe what this great nation has become under this fraud? So why is it happening? Well, I want to take you back in time, as you call this show The Savage Nation, to express your viewpoints on whether you support or oppose Russia's airstrikes yesterday and today. Very simple question. Do you support or oppose Russia's airstrikes today? Now, please don't call me and tell me he's not, that they're not attacking ISIS, they're attacking Syrian rebels. We covered that baby talk yesterday. Well, let's move the dialogue a little past what we all know is true. And by the way, at the same time, right on schedule, sorry I can't notice it, there's a shooting in an Oregon community college, 10 dead, Right on schedule. I'm sorry, uh, I'm not generally given to conspiracy theories, but it seems to be a very convenient way to get Obama's abject, disastrous failures as a foreign policy moron off the headlines. Now we're all focused on the deaths at a community college. I didn't say that it was orchestrated by the government, but I'm starting to wonder, how do these things happen so conveniently for a failure like this? Where is Obama? What fundraiser is he at? Where is, the, where is he hiding? Well, let's put that aside again. Do you remember when the Pope was here 10,000 years ago? That was just a week ago, remember? The great communist Pope came through, waving his magic wand, and millions of fools came running, not, on, not knowing he was exp expounding the straight-out socialist line of the Peronistas from his home country. They didn't even know what they were cheering. Remember what I said to you? Weeks before the Jewish holidays that just came and went. Remember what I told you that what was coming around Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and then the Pope arrived. I said there are things happening in this universe 
that are going to be bigger than you can imagine right after the Pope's visit. I told you that. Do you remember that on this show? I'm not talking about the Redskins today. I'm not going to waste your time talking about sports. This is a talk show. You want to turn into a sports show? Good, good luck to you. There's plenty of sports radio shows. Why he hit one out of that field? No, he didn't hit it really the greatest. He has a 200. No, he has a 220. Why well, remember my father took me to a baseball game? No, I have my hat on backwards. I know what's going on. And you wonder why you have no country, you fool? Pay attention. Be a man. Put a pair of pants on and get the shorts off. Put your hat on forwards, not backwards, you idiot, you. You're losing your nation. And you're losing your nation because of yourself, because you don't pay attention to politics. So I'm going to help you pay attention to politics. You are witnessing one of the greatest events in your lifetime. You are witnessing a change like you have never seen in your lifetime. And I predicted when the Pope was here, when the blood moon was here, when the Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur holidays were over, I predicted right on this microphone, right in your ears, that great events were happening and things would happen that you would never expect. And then Obama had a meeting with Putin and he was going to put that Putin in his place. And the thin man walked out of the meeting, the big thin man. He walked out of that meeting with that booming voice of his. Talk loudly and carry a broken stick. And if you looked at the still shots that were doctored by his friends in the media, he looked like he was in charge. But if you looked at the moving pictures of the thin man, he looked like a frightened child who had just had hell itself visited upon him. He was scared to death. And the very next day, Putin launched airstrikes. Now, uh, Putin decrees drafting 150,000 conscripts. I predicted something big was happening. I didn't know what it would be. So you say, all right, great, Savage, now move on. What do you predict now? It's easy to say you're looking back and you predicted something big. You didn't say what, and something big did happen. So very nice, Savage, but I'm a cynic. I don't believe a word you say. You're not so smart. So what's going to happen tomorrow, Savage? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll turn to the source. I will turn to the source of all of my wisdom and all of my knowledge because it's in my DNA. It's in Michael's DNA. I'm not here by accident. I'm not even living by accident. I'm here because somebody up there wants me here. Let's put it to you that way. I won't use the word. I know it offends people. Somebody up there wants me here. And I'm now turning to the word of that someone up there where he talks about Gog and Magog because the Bible predicted what would happen. Persia, Cush, and Put will come against Israel. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech. I can't even pronounce these names. I never heard of them. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, chief prince of Meshech and Tubah. What is this about? And I will turn thee about and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed most gorgeously, a great company with buckler and shield, all of them handling, handling swords, Persia, Cush, and put with them all of them with shield and helmet. And then it goes on in Ezekiel, if you want to see biblical prophecy coming to light. Thus saith the Lord God, art thou he of whom I spoke in old time by my servants, the prophets of Israel that prophesied in those days for many years that I would bring thee against them? And it shall come to pass in that day when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God that my fury shall arise up in my nostrils. You see, God knew this was coming. God knew that Iran would run through that corridor like Grant took Richmond. Because that's what's happening right in front of your eyes. The very Iran that your president, that your lousy president, the very Iran that your lousy president just gave a pathway to nuclear weapons, the day later he's turned on, on, on your lousy president. And Iran is now racing into the Syria that Obama thinks he controlled. But who really controls what's going to happen? God controls it. It's been prophesied. It shall come to pass in that day when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, that my fury shall arise up in my nostrils. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. There shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel, 
so that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep upon the ground and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and the mountains shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains. You can read it yourself. And I will send the fire on Magog. I will send the fire on them that dwell safely in the isles, and they shall know that I am God. We are living through crazed biblical times, and I have chills up my spine as I tell you this. Many years ago when I was a local radio host, I think I was still a local host, 15 years ago, I don't remember. It would have to have been longer. I had Jerry Falwell on, who at the time was extremely influential in this nation and in the world. Remember, he was Ronald Reagan's pastor. Do you remember? Do you remember that man? And he spoke of Gog and Magog on this program, on the Savage Nation at that time. It was new to me at the time, but I've since looked at it because I asked him what he predicted would come. And he told me to look at Gog and Magog and he explained it. We're going to try and find that tape. Falwell is no longer with us. He's in heaven. But the fact of the matter is, these are profound times, whether you think they're controlled by God or not. You have to admit that these are profound times. And you also have to admit that we have an invisible president who doesn't even exist. Barack Obama may as well be a virtual president. Barack Obama is a total creation of whoever found him, cultivated him, created him, and used him to push this communist agenda down our throats. That's right, Barack Obama is a virtual president. Where is he? Where is he? He's nowhere to be found. And at the same time, 10 people shot at a community college in Oregon. We still don't know who the shooter is. Very convenient, wouldn't you say? Very convenient that the day the invisible president is more invisible than ever. Suddenly, CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, ABC, CBS, NBC is suddenly covering a shooting on a community college instead of the fact that Russia is bombing Syria and that Russia signed a decree drafting 150,000 conscripts into the Russian military. Party on, girls. Party on, girls. Girls just want to have fun. Michael Savage, you'll be back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I think that what Russia is doing may save the lives of, of Christians in the Middle East. You understand that the uh, Syrian government, uh, for, you know, for their good and for their bad, uh, over the history of, of this country, they have protected Christians. They have protected minorities uh, from the Islamist. 100% right. That's the very influential son of beloved evangelist Billy Graham, a Reverend Franklin Graham, speaking out as a true leader. And he spoke on Newsmax television. And he said what I said yesterday, which any common, anyone who understands what is going on knows to be true. What Russia is doing as repugnant as it may appear to you, may save the lives of Christians and, by the way, of Jews in Syria. Where are the Jews on this? I'm sorry, I have to say it again. Where are the professional Jewish organizations? Where are they? The, I don't even know the names of these groups. Where are they when they see what's going on? Do you know that the Jewish people in Syria are a large minority community and they're protected by Assad? You didn't know that? You know the Christians who are being slaughtered in Iraq and Syria are protected by Assad? That's not a, a factor in your decision of what should be done? Why is Russia protecting Christians on top of protecting Assad? Because he understands we're in a battle for the survival of Christianity and the Western civilization. Wake up, fool. Look beyond the stupid Reaganites who are stuck in the 1980s as though it's the Russia of the Soviet era. They can't get past the 1980s. It's as though they fell into a pile of amber. Like prehistoric mastodons, they go around saying that Russia is the greatest threat to the world. Well, let me tell you something. When I lay awake at night and I can't sleep thinking about my grandchildren, I don't worry about what Russia might be doing. I worry about what these psychotic bastards are doing who are called Islamists. I have a video on my website of an Islamic throwback in Norway. They let him in under asylum. And he says anyone who burns the Koran must be killed. And then he says it will be, he will be killed by a Muslim. It won't be me because he understands he can't say that. He said it could happen from a Somali or a Chechen or some other Muslim in this country. Do you understand what it is?